Happy Friday again mga Katribo! Welcome to another episode of Kalingang Katribo Legal Diaries. And today we are again joined by none other than Aranas Cruz Araneta Parker and Faustino Law Offices Associate Lawyer, none other than Attorney Alfred Campagnano. Good afternoon, Attorney! In today's uh, episode, pag-usapan po natin yung RA 7160 or the Local Government Code of 1991. But before that, oh, bumati ka naman muna sa ating mga katribo. Good afternoon, uh, uh, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Happy weekend. Long weekend nga pala. Oo, oh, uh, we are, today we are celebrating uh, the 36th anniversary of the EDSA People Power Revolution. Anyway, uh, uh, so let's proceed now to our discussion <coughs> attorney. Um, uh, I said we're talking about the Local Government Code of 1991 or RA 7160. Can you give us a brief oversight of what RA 7160 is all about? Uh, RA 7160 is also known as your Local Government Code. Now, the local government code is basically your your organic law or your primary law governing what are the authorities of a local government unit what are its powers or what are what is what are its powers and what are the extents of the controls uh, that's lodged with the philippine government so national the relationship between the national and your local government unit so basically this is the primary law that Uh, advocates or forwards rather the principle of local autonomy which is enshrined no, in the Philippine Constitution. Ayun. So that's the primary objective and the general scope of the Local Government Code of 1991. Pero uh, why, why is there a need for the enactment of this code? Ba? Dahil Uh, were there weren't there any laws before that uh, specify this power or medyo hiwa-hiwalay ba yon so that there was a need to consolidate all these uh, powers and responsibilities and uh, uh, mga features ng local government that you have we have the congress so the need to enact this code um actually the real need to codify this uh the powers and authorities and principles governing local government unit stemmed from the fact that we have a new constitution because prior or previous constitution meron na tayong mga provisions no governing local government unit what are the relations pero kung makikita mo in, if you're going to observe it in the 1935 and the 1973 constitutions makikita mo diyan that there really is a sort of stronghold pa ang um, national government mo over your local government units. The idea here is because of the new constitution, which is basically uh, forwarding local autonomy, then the local government code is the way that the state legislature saw it fit to guide everyone on what are the powers and to ensure, of course, the local autonomy of local government units. Because... Ultimately, uh, it, there's been a, the policy is shifting towards that government services are effectively or efficiently, effectively and efficiently given if it is coursed through the local channels or yung mga tao nakakaintindi that speaks the language of the locality as opposed to yung naririnig na natin in certain literatures na kung saan may tinatawag na the Imperial Manila. Diba? So parang ang idea natin dyan is Because of local autonomy as the primary driving force of the of uh, well our new constitution, it's always best that the local government units are guided on what are the kind, what is the extent of their autonomy and how their autonomy is protected under the new constitution. Yeah, you're, you talked about local autonomy as the guiding principle of uh, uh, the local government code of 1991. Can you briefly tell us ano anong ibig sabihin nitong autonomy na ito at uh, ano yung in relation to the powers of the national government? Uh, talaga bang uh, ito ba full autonomy kaya bang gawin ng local government ng lahat ng gusto nilang gawin? Because that's the usual concept of autonomy, you have your self-governing. So, 
what's what's the concept of autonomy as uh, applied uh, under the local government code? Uh, alam mo sir Roy, no? that question gets kind of... <laughs> you're asking me to summarize a uh, four or three subject, no? Uh, 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 <laughs> so let, let me rephrase the question. Let me rephrase the question. <laughs> So is is this full autonomy or uh, a limited autonomy in the sense that uh, hindi ka naman nakakawala sa authority ng national government? In that if that's the case obviously uh, local autonomy is not full autonomy because under the constitution we still recognize that the uh, that the Philippine government the Republic of the Philippines is one sovereign state. So hindi tayo parang kunare eh ako tiga Baguio eh hindi we're not the state of Baguio yes. or di ba or we are not the state of Metro Manila we are we still belong to one government or one state which is the Philippine state that's a uh, Philippine government so in that case it's we are still in a unitary form of government so yung lo- yung local autonomy na yan there's basically a decentralization of certain powers yon No, na kung saan mas yes, may mention a while ago the decentralization is based on the fact or on the principle that the local government uh, uh, sorry through the leadership of local leaders then mas maganda and mas efficient ang delivery of service uh, services to the people as opposed to lahat ng services is controlled regulated and supervised by the Philippine national government Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so uh, just to make things clear, um, the framers of the Constitution and the framers of the, in accordance with that, the framers of the local government code, so it fit that decentralization would best uh, uh, serve the needs of the local people na hindi naman agad nakikita ng mga national leaders ko anong sitwasyon doon sa lugar na yon. Exactly. That's actually the real reason why local autonomy is now enshrined in the Philippine Constitution. So, uh, binigyan ng greater ika nga eh, elbow room yung mga local uh, government officials to do what they think is best for their constituents. Although, ano na, to be clear lang, it does not mean na, yun nga, as we've explained a while ago, that yes. there's a parang severance already of the relationship yes. between the national government and the LGUs. Because obviously there are certain powers that will remain to be uh, kept by the national government. Yes. So for example, uh, uh, an obvious example would be is, yung mga local government mo does not have the right to diplomatic relations. Of course. So, yung, yung mga si ISCO, for example, is not the one who's talking with global leaders to represent the nation. That's That belongs to President Duterte right now. So, yung mga ganyang classing powers are still remain remains to be with the national government the because national. that's an aspect of sovereignty. Because LGUs are not given sovereignty meaning the right to you know in ba, to be a state and have diplomatic relations i suppose as opposed to local autonomy na kung saan self governance lang powers na kung saan you're allowed to govern and manage your own affairs to the extent na mas kaya mo pa parang yung idea diyan and in relation to this uh, concept of autonomy <clears throat> lalo na nito nga no when during this time of pandemic lumabas yung Napag-usapan yung General Welfare Clause. Uh, uh, under the 19, uh, 1991 uh, Local Government Code, ano ba itong General Welfare Clause? Can you uh, explain the to ge- us what is this? At the risk of sounding na nagbibigay lang ako ng motherhood statements, no? But actually, the General Welfare Clause is seen in Section 16 of 7160. Yeah. Na kung saan, it basically says that the powers of the local government unit one that is expressly given to it and all that are em- that all that stems from that express power so meaning they have the authority to uh, let's say exercise what is under their charter yung mga powers and mm-hmm. abilities that they can do under their charters even if it's not stated in the charter but if it is implied or necessary 
then they can also exercise the same. So, may, so yun yung tinatawag na express, implied, and incidental powers. The local government unit can actually exercise. However, the general welfare is the primary consideration in exercising these powers. So, hindi lang sila basta-basta hindi sila gumagawa ng, for example, they don't exercise the develop uh, development of public roads, they don't exercise... Uh, the uh, uh, the power to operate public markets for their personal gain but the intention here is all of this action is for the well the welfare of the constituents that they are governing uh, uh, bang general welfare clause na to? it is is this one of the basis halimbawa ng mga ordinances requiring <laughs> uh, uh, people to wear masks during the pandemic and uh, to for example nag-impose ng curfew dun sa mga dun sa mga minors actually in in a way it is no because again that's an exercise the the idea of imposing regulations curfews or obligations on you to how to conduct yourself in public these are forms of uh, let's of police power exercise by the LGU so meaning you can Indian basta Indian inenact dahil trip lang ng mga LGU leaders so the presumption is that this underwent debate kaya nga may ordinances na pinapasa or mga discussions or studies by the technical team of your L- local chief executive so all of this is presumed by the law to have been exercised for the general welfare. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, kung hindi, then you have the right to question the validity of the same. And that's why, kaya ko naitanong ito, attorney, kasi I remember, uh, yung IATF recommended these kinds of action and they left it to the Metro Manila Council to decide among themselves kung i-implement ito. Uh, that's why naitanong ko, ito ba yung exercise no? It related sa exercise ng general welfare clause. It actually is. And it is also an, a good example as well that there are certain, the, it's also a recognition on the part of the IATF, which is a national government or a national agency rather, na to trust the capabilities of the local government units to handle their own affairs. Kaya nga, di ba, may, may mga parang it's up to them whether to determine kung alert level 3, 2, 1, etc. And what are the kinds of operations and businesses that are allowed once these lo- alert levels are imposed in their locality. Ayan. Thank you sa mga ano, clarifications, attorney. Mga katribo, things are getting interested. Attorney, dyan ka lang. Magbabalik tayo after a few reminders. Makinig at makisali sa usapan every Friday night at 6pm sa I Speak Katribu Podcast. Samahan si na Daniel at Alvin na pag-usapan ang mga relevant topic na tiyak kakarelatean nyo mga katribu. At pagdating ng Sunday at 7pm, speak your mind with our I Speak program na sasagot sa mga tanong regarding the latest and relevant issues sa paligid natin. I-like at i-follow nyo ang Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now on YouTube para updated ka sa mga latest episode namin mga katribu. Magandang araw mga katribu! Narito na ang mga makakasama nyo tuwing umaga sa programang Gising Na. Roy Pelovelo, Atty. Lia Badilio Crisostomo, Vernon Velasco, Kim Sancha at Chirk Balagtas. Abangan ang programang Gising Na mula alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga sa Facebook page ng Daily Tribune. Ilabas na ang mainit na kape at samahan kami sa inyong pag-almusal, mga katribo. Simulan natin ang bawat umaga with good vibes sa mga informative and recreational segments ng aming programa. Maaari nyo rin ibahagi sa amin ang inyong opinion via Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now sa YouTube. 
Makichika na rin sa latest showbiz happenings mga katribo. Kaya naman, magkita-kita po tayo mula lunes hanggang beres, alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga at magsama-sama po tayo sa Gisina! Be updated sa news and happenings katribu. Hatid ng Daily Tribune sa inyo ang mga balitang napapanahon sa loob at labas ng bansa. Kami na ang bahala sa paghahatid sa inyo ng mga latest and reliable news. We got you covered sa programang Tribune News on Q. Mapapanood mula umaga hanggang gabi, lunes hanggang biyernes sa Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now on YouTube. Informasyong direktang makukuha mula sa sources at diretsyahang usapan. Yan ang ating daming sa inyo sa programang Straight Talk. Samahan nyo kami sa makabuluhang talakayan live tuwing Martes alas 10 ng umaga sa official Facebook page ng Daily Tribune at Tribune Now on YouTube. Welcome back to Kalingan Katribo Legal Diaries and we're still with Attorney Alfred and a while ago we were discussing the features of the Local Government Code of 1991. So we're now resuming our attorney. Let's now resume our discussion. Kanina we were just talking <coughs> about the general features. The, ang pinakahuli nating diniscuss yung general welfare clause and we related it to the powers and authorities uh, given to it by the IATF, not really given, but uh, recognized by the IATF.